Hello, so I wanted to do an updated video regarding masks and coronavirus because there's more info out now that's worth, you know, paying attention to. So this has to do with something called viral load. Now we've touched upon this before in other videos and I think quite a lot of other channels have, but there's more and more info coming out about this now. So this sounds like one of the mysteries to, um, you know, protection and things like that with coronavirus and why some people seem to really get it worse than other people without any real reason. Now, of course, some of that might be genetics and luck and maybe slightly mutated strains of the disease, but viral load would be the easiest thing for a person to protect themselves from. So basically, viral load is an exposure type thing. The idea being a more enclosed space you're in with somebody who is ill with coronavirus uh, or incubating it, uh, the more risk you're at. So basically it's a bit like the radiation, you know, time distance exposure thing. It's very similar to that in a way, that basically if you're walking past somebody in the street, even if they're coughing and they've got coronavirus, if you inhale a bit of that cough it might not be all that bad, um, because you'll get some into your lungs, you know, it will make you ill, but you're probably quite likely to overcome it. Yet, however it seems, that because doctors are getting this the worst, if doctors without proper protective equipment, that many are all around the world unfortunately, are in an enclosed ward with many sick people with coronavirus um, and they're working long shifts, their exposure goes up, um, therefore their initial viral load goes up and they're, they're the ones who are more likely to die or get severe complications from this. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is basically how any mask at this point offers some level of protection, regardless of the filtering abilities. Now of course, the masks with better filters and everything of course give you better protection. So, something like an FFP2 or FFP3 half face mask is a very good choice, you know, and again, you probably want to cover your eyes because there's been evidence for quite a while that eye exposure leads to problems. But I wanted to even bring up if you're making homemade masks like the Soviet PTM1, if you couldn't get proper masks anymore, something like this would still offer actually very good protection because what we're learning is that even something like a basic bandana pulled around the face. Although it offers barely any filtration ability, because it does filter some air coming in, um, that is going to lower your exposure and therefore give you a better chance if you contracted it. Similarly, um, it's a good idea if everybody was wearing a mask, just simply because if everybody's wearing a mask, it puts less exposure risks to other people. So I had a few people in the stream saying, if I have a mask like this with an XL valve, how do I use that to protect other people? Because the problem is when you exhale, it goes straight out of the XL valve. I'd say just stick a bit of maybe tissue or, um, you know, kitchen roll or toilet paper over the um, exhale valve. That way when you're breathing out, you're breathing out into the tissue, it should still, the mask pressure should still flow properly, but germs are getting caught there. But the point is obviously the better level of filter protection, the better it is for you if you are definitely exposed and you're wearing it. But any level of mask, it seems, will offer some protection because the less of the particles that get through the mask and into your lungs, um, the less of a viral load you're experiencing. And of course, the safest option is still to do what you're being told to do nearly all around the world, stay at home and you know minimise exposure risks of other people. But let's say you have to go out to the supermarket or you have to care for somebody, you know, you, you will want a mask and the better filtration of the mask, the better. But this is really, I think, explaining a lot of the mysteries around Corona of why, you know, people with different levels of masks, filters, were seeming to get ill or not ill you know, and some people who seemed healthier were getting iller. And it seems to be just simply down to a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it seems to be down to the more you are exposed to it. So it seems to be definitely an exposure thing to a viral load. So what this means is in some ways it's a lot less scary than people thought for your average Joe, but for doctors it's a lot, lot worse. And unfortunately doctors are the ones who are going to be on the front line against this, as well as some other professions, you know, that are really going to have to unfortunately be in quite a bad situation. So the point is that this definitely drives home the fact that filtration masks are a good thing because apparently our government is still going, well, we don't know if it actually helps if people wear masks, but maybe they're saying that as an excuse because they can't even get PPE to doctors. They were also complaining that when doctors were getting rid of PPE because, you know, they'd worn, worn it, uh, doctors had to go on break, they couldn't put the same dirty PPE back on after they'd been on break. They were saying that was a misuse of the PPE because it wasn't, you know, looking after it properly. It's pretty outrageous. Anyway, that's not the theme of the video, but the theme is that, you know, what we have learnt is that even a homemade mask made out of some cottony type materials would work well. Of course, proper dust masks, gas masks, whatever, are going to give you much better levels of protection. 
but it really is an exposure thing versus how well the air is filtered coming into your, you know, nasal passage, nose, mouth, eyes. So yeah, if, if this video might give us some good news, and the good news is that any level of filtration that you put between you and the virus um, does actually apparently massively raise your chances, because it's not a case like we were originally thinking of, you know, if you had a mask on, if anything got through the filter eventually, then that would basically mean you'd got coronavirus. Now it basically seems like, you know, any kind of filter, less virus microns potentially getting through, less serious illness when you develop it, if you develop it. So, biologic, what they seem to be thinking is that some people who are asymptomatic are asymptomatic because they just maybe touch something, touch their face, eyes, mouth, something like that, rub the germs in, a very small amount of the germs has got into them, you know, that was led to a very small viral load, which is why they're asymptomatic, or they have, like, a cold-like symptoms. People who might have been, you know, on a bus for five minutes or something, near somebody who had coronavirus, or it was still floating in the air, that might be somebody who gets it mildly severely. And doctors, unfortunately, I think the reason now, according to the viral load theory, lots of them are dying, is a very, very serious condition, is just because they are working long hours surrounded by people with this in enclosed spaces. So... There you go, I, I hope this answers some questions people have been leaving in the streams, it certainly answers some of my questions I've been having, that, you know, the science is at least getting there now, according to lots of the journals and that you can read, so yeah, viral, ro uh, viral load limit your exposure.